I'm back, Chuck. I know. <laughs> well, that means it's time to talk about something that you thought you knew, but you didn't really know everything you thought you knew about it. Or even if you never knew to think anything about it. Sometimes there's those things as well. True. Uh, you know, one of our more successful of these was on water towers. Wasn't that yes. amazing? It's got it millions and millions, millions of views. Millions of views. And, yeah. and, and nobody thinks about water towers. <laughs> So it's just, yeah. but it's a reminder that there's physics in everything. Yes. So today, today I want to talk about the rocket equation. Okay, did you know that? Did you know there was such a thing? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could say Let's, I'm sure there's an equation for everything. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah, there's got to be, right? <laughs> well, actually, so, uh, uh, one of our friends of Star Talk, um, Max Tegmark, uh, he he wrote a book a little while back on. Uh, why he felt we we're all in a simulation. And one right. of the, ev the evidence for that was everything that you see happening in the world can be described mathematically. Mathematically, right. Even a rock. So, even if a rock, yeah. The, what you're talking about the, the forces and pressures within it that comprise right. it and make it. So if everything can be described mathematically, then why can't we just all be in a simulation where it's someone programmed it in, right? right? And, and, and it was like, I had no rebuttal to that. So you would expect, even in that world, the rockets would have their own equation. Of and course. they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So here's how it goes. Have you ever wondered why? Let's take the Saturn V rocket, for example. All right. Uh, for those who remember it. Or we can do the, the space shuttle. Any rocket at all. But the Saturn V is sort of the best um, the, the measure of what I'm about to describe. Right. Okay. The rocket was 34 stories tall. Yeah. Okay. 34 stories. Right. And, all right, uh, where were the astronauts? In half a story. <laughs> <laughs> they are crammed into the capsule right. way at the top. That's okay? Right. Okay. So, well, what's the rest of it? Is it payload? Is it their food supply for while they're on the moon? Mm. No, that fits just behind them a little bit in the rest of the command module. Oh, gosh. Okay? There's a little B section there. They're sitting up front, the three of them, and there's a little sort of store cl storage closet. <laughs> oh my God, it's like a cosmic tractor trailer. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Everything else is rocket fuel. That's ridiculous. Everything. And you can say to yourself, well, how come cars don't look like that? Right. All right. If you if you're going on a trip, how come most of your car is not? It's not tank? your gas tank. It's not your gas tank. That's just right. not the case. By and the way, I am not getting in a car that is ninety eight percent gas tank. I'm just letting you know right now. Well, I'm not driving in that. You know, if you pull up in a car that's ninety eight percent gas tank, I'm like, bruh, I'm taking a bus. I will see. I'll see you when we get there. I'll walk. I'll still will, get there. That's right. Yeah. All right. So so here's what's going on. A rocket, of uh, when you launch. You say, well, how much fuel do I need to launch a certain amount of payload? Okay. Because okay. that's what it's all about, the payload, right? right. How, you know, the astronauts, I forgot which mission where they first took the rover, uh, you know, their, their automobile on the moon. Uh, <laughs> I heard right. Jerry Seinfeld joke about this. Ooh, uh -huh. He said, you know, guys invented this idea. I say, why? Because here you have a rocket going to the moon, and the first thing they said is, let's bring a car. <laughs> <laughs> Just the car culture in America is like right. written all over that. You know, right. we, you got a rocket, guys, that you're not happy enough with that? <laughs> that makes sense. That's funny. <laughs> so, um, so here's the point. We have the payload, and it weighs whatever it does. And you say, how much fuel does it take to get that payload to the moon? To the moon? Okay. So you can calculate that. And it'd be like this much fuel. I'm just gesturing with my fingers here. I'm not, I, the, the amount doesn't matter for what I'm about to describe. Right. So that's how much fuel it takes to get to the moon. All right. Okay. But there's a problem, Chuck. The, pay, the weight of the payload is not only the stuff you're bringing to the moon. Right. It's, that it's fuel also too. The, the weight of the fuel you haven't burned yet. Right. So now I need more fuel to get my fuel. 
Correct. That you gets need... my stuff to the moon. Thank you. Okay, so you need the fuel to get the fuel to burn the fuel to get your stuff to the moon. Now, that bit that you added, now what's I getting need, that to the moon? Now I need my fuel to get my fuel that's getting my fuel to get my stuff to the moon. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the branch of math called calculus is exquisitely conceived for just this kind of problem. Okay. All right. And so what it tells you is that the amount of fuel you need okay. to deliver a certain payload grows exponentially. Okay, cool. For every extra pound of payload. That's why the birth of the, of the space program, you had trim astronauts that we had to miniaturize everything. And in fact, the miniaturization of electronics, right. which we all take for granted today, yeah. Right. You got stuff that fits on your hip, in your pocket. Going back to the Sony Walkman, where you put a cassette tape and you walked around, the miniaturization of electronics was driven by the urge to put this stuff in space. Wow. And so, not this, not Sony Walkman in space, no. but just, just, just circuits and the things that enable electricity to do interesting and important things for you on your journey. Right. So the urge to miniaturize it and make it lighter and lighter and lighter because you you couldn't keep making a bigger and bigger gas tank, okay? So right. that so makes sense. That that's what it was. So you get the the slimmest possible payload. Now there's nothing an engineer likes better than constraints. You know you know think about it that way. Right. Engineer says, "What do I have to do? I need you to do X Y Z elemental P." Okay, and you, but you have to do it for this much money on this time frame, and you can only use copper, zinc, and aluminum. Okay. Wow. That's where ingenuity comes in. Right. Okay. And that is For also why architects hate engineers. <laughs> <laughs> they've, had, they've been tussling from, from the beginning. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I saw jokes about that with the Sphinx back in ancient Egypt. Um, it's like, no, you can't have the nose stick out over the front. It's not going to work. We're going to do it. Ching, ching, the nose falls off. Oh, that's hilarious. It's fake. doesn't have a nose. That's a funny engineering joke. It's I, a, I, right. There's nothing holding up the nose, right? right it's just exactly. That's... Da dangling out there. So <laughs> The Sphinx schnoz. <laughs> that's very funny. Okay, go ahead. All right. So there's a couple of things we can do about this. Okay. Because right. it's all about the weight. Oh, by the way, I forgot this. If right. you have a gas tank and then all the fuel has been exhausted from that tank, but you have other right. tanks, um, that, the empty tank has weight. Yes. So what are you going to do? Now, now it's just not right. Now it's just a, it's useless. So you just Use, get, it's useless. Useless. Okay. Like, so right. Werner von Braun knew this. Werner von Braun was the, the German rocket engineer that we brought over after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And we said, build us a rocket to the moon. And so he did. And he realized that you don't want to carry useless weight with fuel that you need to ultimately get your payload. So he built the rocket into multiple stages. It's brilliant. Multi-stage rocket. So the first stage is the first set of fuel that burns. And there it goes. It gets up to a certain speed, a certain altitude. It is done. What do you do at that stage? Jettison it. Right. You say, get it the hell off of my ass here, okay? Then you kick in the next stage. Oh, God, I wish NASA talked like that. Okay. <laughs> God, that'd be so great. Mission Control, we have reached the altitude of... All right, get that off your ass. <laughs> So anything you're not going to use, get it the hell off of your body, right? So you shed the shell, the rocket shell. And so, so if you're high up and you shed it, it'll burn up in the atmosphere. Now, what, what um, SpaceX is doing is for the set of rockets that jettison low enough to not burn up, okay, you know what they do? They left some fuel in them for them to guide their way back autonomously to a launch pad. That's, and then they reuse them. That's even more brilliant. That's that. And, there it is. And, and a bit scary. Why? 
Because I got used rockets that I'm going to space with. <laughs> no, you refurbish them. No. Uh, no. Uh, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Uh, Chuck, when you get in an airplane, are you saying, wait, has this airplane ever been used before? No, but that no. airplane has never been to space before. <laughs> and I'm not going to space. Okay. So I'm just okay. saying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay, but you do get on an airplane that's been used a gazillion times before. That's true. That's and absolutely if you had to, if you, if every time you got on, you got off an airplane, they, they threw away me. the airplane. That's a different business model, and your airplane ticket would cost a whole lot more yeah. if that's what was going on. So and I'd be J Lo. <laughs> <laughs> I only fly in planes once. Okay. <laughs> If you reuse things, then you get the, the, the benefits of the economy of scale for that. And that is the main contribution that SpaceX is making to this whole enterprise. Okay. Right. Yeah. So they yeah. reuse the rockets that they jettison. The remaining fuel has less weight to then push to its destination. Okay. It's, it's utterly brilliant, I'm telling okay. you. So just to be clear, the rocket that went to the moon needed enough fuel to leave Earth, go into orbit, leave Earth. Earth orbit, go to the moon, go into orbit around the moon, land on the moon, come back to Earth moon orbit, leave Earth moon orbit, and come back to Earth. Oh, man. All of that fuel had to be in that vessel, okay? And they're just leaving stuff left and right. So on the moon, they left the, the landing pad, they left the rovers, they, they brought some rocks, but, and so by the time they got back, they just did the capsule that was there right. at the top of the 36, 34-story building. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay, so now- the reason why you don't have cars with 98% of their mass in fuel, by the way, you would need such a car if you were driving from here to California. We're in New York now. If you drive from here to California and there were no filling stations, you'd have to carry all your fuel. That's right. And you would, and some of the energy burned in that fuel would be to move not only your ass and your luggage and your family, but the other fuel that is not yet to burn. That's right. In fact, the gas mileage for those still using internal combustion engine cars, the gas mileage of your car gets better the less gas you have in the tank. Right, because it's pushing something. It's fueling something that's lighter. It's lighter, precisely. And so right. I, when I was on a budget and I had to, I actually calculated that and I would save a few dollars a month by driving half empty down to like a fifth empty rather than a full tank down to half tank. So anyhow. Did you, did you also calculate how to draft trucks so you could <laughs> yeah, save fuel? I did that once. Oh, I did come that on. Once. No, no, watch, watch. <laughs> no, wait, watch, watch. No, the problem is this doesn't work in space. That's the problem because it requires air. All right. Oh, there you go. Right. But, but um, I, my first car that I got that actually told you your active miles per gallon in a readout, okay, that calculated that. Right. So I could see when I'm accelerating hard, the miles per gallon drops, as you'd yeah. expect. Yeah. Cruising, that's higher. So I said, let me try something. I went up behind a big old 18-wheeler, and I got closer and closer and closer to it. Now, it can't see me in its rearview mirrors, right? so it doesn't know I'm there. I didn't feel safe doing this, but it was for science, okay? So <laughs> I did that, and as I got closer, I watched the miles per gallon go up, and at one, t at one point in there, I was getting 100 miles a gallon. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because yeah. you were just using their... Yeah, all of the... Um, I was drafting off the truck. Off the truck. That's so that, cool. That, that's cool. Anyhow, so the real way to travel through space, just to bring this to closure, okay. is you need filling stations in space. Oh, man. That way, I don't need all that fuel. I just need fuel to get to the filling station. Now, will these filling stations have mini marts? <laughs> I need a candy bar. I, I'm I need just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I, you pull up. Hey, right. can, you, can you check the oil? <laughs> right. Check the oil. I'm going to go inside and get some chips and juice. <laughs> <laughs> so the future of space travel is going to have to be that, or you find a way to make fuel at your destination. And there are people thinking about that for Mars, uh, Mars especially. Um, but also the moon, which has fewer chemical resources. But anyhow, the, the rocket equation tells you how big ass your rocket has to be because it's the fuel that carries the fuel that carries the fuel that carries the fuel that carries your stuff. That's pretty cool. And calculus makes that a continuous equation where you make the calculation perfect, and we've been doing that ever since the dawn of the space program. Chuck, we got to call it quits there.
All righty. That was there cool. you go. Now you know how to get to Mars. Yes, I do. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> All right. As always, keep looking up. <laughs>